everyone and welcome. I do not have an intro, but I have a brand new video for you. In this video, we are continuing our base game only zoo, which is a zoo in which I've given myself the challenge to build only using the base game pieces. And basically my little challenge or my pretty big challenge is done once I've built for all the base game animals. Um, I, like I've said before, this is not really a challenge because the base game has amazingly many pieces, so it's really not as hard as I thought it would be, um, but it's nonetheless. Uh, in this episode of it, we are building a very classic um, enclosure, classic in the sense that the way that it is built and the way that it is structured, and also um, uh, it's kind of very, uh, it has a lot of like, um, like straight corners, you know? Uh, I think it, it is, looks kind of older, which I really like because I think that this base game zoo, because we have to encounter for, um, n not encounter, uh, account for, <laughs> account for all the, you know, um, but for very, very different types of animals, like from different corners of the world, this kind of has to be a city zoo um, that has like some indoor enclosures and some outdoor and is city zoo-ish built so what you can see me do right now is kind of make sure that this the platforms that they can walk on that they look man-made um sort of like they're made out of concrete and then there is uh like a sand pit inside of it that the rhinos can oh we, we're really for the rhinos by the way <laughs> um but that the rhinos can walk in um or on uh, they can get into the water which was something that i didn't know if that was going to be possible while i was building it i was kind of like Whatever, if they can reach it, that's cool. And if they can't, that's also cool. I don't think they need a lot of water. Um, but they do walk around in it, uh, not a ton, but they do. And um, they can get down there. They can get down even the edges. They don't have to, on the side, there is a little bit uh, like a piece where they can, you know, walk in naturally, like without climbing down the edge of it uh, because I wanted them to be able to drink uh, and I, you know, didn't want to put in the fountain thing. So that's why I left it to the side, like kind of open um, for them to get in, but they can get in all around. So uh, that's good. And it looks kind of funny when they're stepped down. It looks kind of unnatural, but um, it, it's it's all good. So um, that is kind of the idea of this and why this looks really boxy. And also um, because it's not boxy everywhere, it's also like, this is probably a pretty old enclosure. So um, over the years, you know, the sand has dragged down and maybe some like edges got covered up in dirt and uh, rocks and whatnot. So um, that is kind of the idea. That is why some of this is very, easily identifiable as concrete and some of it looks more natural, which I think kind of works really well together. Uh, it is somewhat realistic that there's trees growing on it if we go off the idea that this is concrete. Um, but you know, maybe they left some like pe like holes in the concrete for roots to grow, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, there's trees on it. I'm not the biggest fan of, even though it is more realistic and I am aware of that, I'm not the biggest fan of putting um, foliage into like you know a safety box like i know that real zoos do it and i know that why they do it and i know that it is more realistic but i do love the lush look that you can give your enclosures uh when you don't do it so i really like when it's overgrown so i might do it in some enclosures especially with the elephants i think that that is kind of almost a must but uh i didn't do it here and I just, I just prefer how it looks when the plants look somewhat natural. Um, so I kind of, uh, you know, uh, choose aesthetics over realism here, but I think it's, it, you kind of have to do both. I, I, I think to me it is more fun if I can uh, have fun with the aesthetics, but not too unrealistically. Um, which is kind of what I'm aiming for usually. Um, we are building a little bit of an indoor, like a stable for them here. Uh, there's nothing inside of that yet. Um, I think it looks cool from the outside, but there's nothing inside of it yet. There's nothing on the back side of it. And the reason being that I don't really know what's going to be on the other side of the zoo if maybe we are going to um, kind of incorporate this into a larger building that maybe has an indoor viewing for them so that the guests can see them see them so to me it didn't really make sense to you know build a stable that is made for a 
purely backstage reason and then later on change it to something that the guests can see. Like to me that felt like um, kind of, you know, pointless because that would mean that I would basically have to rebuild it entirely because uh, the stuff that you don't see and the stuff that you do see <laughs> is vastly different. Um, you know, because if you are building for the guests, basically you always have to kind of have in mind like what is the, how is the view framed and um, what can they see, what is like, how can they see the animals well and if you just built for the animal that it has a shelter, that's obviously not important, the animal has to just be sheltered and be comfortable. Uh, so for now this is very empty, there are some hay beds in there. Um, so they can use it and they can traverse it. I tested all of that. So if we leave it like that, um, I might do some like stable walls inside of it so that they can be separated or something. But it's not uh, it's not a very interior heavy thing um, whatsoever. I do, however, like the little entrance that the keeper has um, because you know the cool thing with rhinos and also hippos. I think more so hippos is that uh, they are so like huge and uh, wide that um, sometimes what they can do is just uh, have like pillars there and a human can pass through it but a rhino can't. So you can see this to the side that there's a little bit of a doorway in this curved piece which by the way is a really cool piece and it, I think we only have it in this specific build set but I do love the doorway in the curve. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, so in this curved um, door frame, we have a pillar. So basically, obviously in the game, it isn't working like that, but um, the idea is that the keeper can slide through there, but the rhino can. Um, obviously, I don't think the keeper would go in when the rhinos are outside, um, but yeah, I felt like that would be um, sort of a cool thing add and uh, I think that also uh, I've been to a zoo before where there was a really cool indoor oh not really cool but there was an indoor section that you can uh, view as a guest for rhinos and it, it's basically like a lot of pillars that it's not really like fenced or um, like stable gates or whatever it's just pillars that they can move so that the rhinos can pass through or can't pass through certain areas. Um, so that I thought was really interesting just because they're so large that a pillar can hold them back. Like they would get stuck between pillars so they they don't walk there. <laughs> so that's really interesting and that is an actual way where, how like um, rhinos can be kept away from where they're not supposed to go. Um, the rest of the habitat just has a concrete wall around it, like very uninspired it's just a brown concrete wall but i might change this later depending on which animal is going to be next to it so i'm thinking maybe zebras uh, i don't really want to do like a um a huge savannah exhibit or something um i do understand that they're cool and i do understand that they happen but in most zoos, realistically, they don't have that many species on one big display. I've never, I've, I mean, I've seen it, but it's not, you know, the usual go-to. And like I said before, like this zoo, because it's just like a, more of a challenge in a city zoo, I don't want to, you know, um, push the boundaries of what and what isn't possible. I just want it to be a very basic zoo, actually. Um, but that actually does house all the species and where I'm really more focused on um, what can I build with just a base game and can I give, or not can I give, I'm sure I can, but uh, I, I wanna give more love to the base game animals because we've had them for years now and I understand that it is so exciting to build for new animals, but uh, especially people who didn't play right from the start or maybe haven't played uh, planet coaster and had to spend years getting used to the to the um the ui and all the ins and outs of building i don't think you know i mean i know i haven't built for all the base game animals yet so i i know that there's probably a lot of people who've never built for all the base game animals so i i really want to do that um and it's also kind of um nice for me in terms of planning because i i don't have to think like what will fit i just know Okay, I have a list of animals um, and I'm not going one by one, like that would be stupid, but I, I can 
plan this properly. And it's also, it's also kind of um, easy on my mind to know that there won't be, except for maybe an anniversary gift, there won't be a new animal come into this. Because with other zoos, it's like, um, sometimes you build something, uh, let's say we would build like a primate house and then with a new pack, there comes a new primate. And then you're there like, okay, do I rip apart my entire primate house because there's a new one? Or do I, do, uh, like, do I kind of work around it and give it another enclosure? And with this, I don't have to worry about this because I, I just, I know which animals are there. So except for maybe potentially a anniversary animal, nothing can really stop my plans, which to me, an avid planner is really like easing uh, to my mind. So um, I, that's good. I, that's probably a new thing, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's still good, right? Um, I do really like how uh, all of the foliage that I picked for this area of the zoo really also kind of works when you um, pull it over into the main sections, like around the paths and stuff, like what you can see right here um, is, it's really nice that these things, that the foliage kind of flows from the exhibits over into like the real world, I want to say. and. Um, that's really good. I, I do sometimes struggle a bit, and this is probably still due to uh, the back in the days with uh, Zoo Tycoon, but I do so sometimes struggle with um, finding a good segue into a new section of the zoo without it looking like a cut, you know? Like, I want it to naturally feel like you're entering a new area um, and not like a gate that says Africa and then suddenly everything's different. Um, but still, you know, carry over certain plans into certain areas. And I think if you uh, are just building, <laughs> it sometimes new plans just kind of find you, I guess. Like with this, um, which is something actually that you're going to see soon, I build a huge um, flower pot in front and um, I reuse the same flowers up top because there will be another viewing area that we've not even touched upon yet, but uh, I used the same flowers for the flower top up, flower, oh my god, the flower bed up top, and um, uh, and now I know that when I will continue to build on kind of the higher level of the zoo, because there's different height elevations already, um, I will probably carry on some of those flowers and some of those plants that I use there and that kind of eases it into this area, you know what I mean? So these things um, I still kind of struggle with uh, as a result of um, Zoo Tycoon 2, where if, if you've ever played this game, it was an amazing game and I think everyone loves Planet Zoo that has, that had been a kid or a teenager or whatever age whoever's had a computer at the time that uh, Zoo Tycoon was out and was old enough to read basically loved it um, it was an amazing game but the big thing was that you had a terrain paint that wasn't like uh, we have it now with like this is sand and this is grass but it was like this is a tropical floor this is a savanna floor this is a grassland floor um, so they looked super different and they wouldn't like really have a natural flow into it. So a lot of times the zoos would be like on a grassland map and then where the fence is would suddenly start just snow. <laughs> so, and, and that I think, I, I still kind of carry that mentality with me sometimes that like, um, so we are building for this and this animal, so now everything has to fit it. Like everything has to look like a savanna now. And that's just not realistically how zoos function and, or how they even can function. Um, so that is really something that I'm trying to get better with. And I, I like how it, it's going so far. I mean, we will see. Now most of the animals are kind of fit in this sort of kind of savanna, but more lush sort of theme but we will see how it goes once we go to animals from like an actually very different sort of area of the world or area of like climate you know um so yeah especially with the tropical animals i think we will do a lot of indoor enclosures and same obviously with the uh, uh very cold climate animals um i mean we don't really have them do we i mean we don't have the polar bear because that's not from the base game 
Uh, we do have the snow leopards, but those never, I mean, those usually have a very like, uh, temperate biome sort of enclosure, like at least all that I've ever seen. I mean, it makes sense. No zoos really do like do fake snow or something. So um, I, I, it does make sense, I guess. So with these animals, yeah, we will see, <laughs> but um, we will definitely build for all of them because like I said, my challenge for this is to build for all the base game animals. So um, I don't really have a correct number in my head right now, but I do know that I've already gone through the list and I kind of grouped together animals where I know that I want a kind of conjoined thema, not necessarily thematic in the sense of, uh, you know, putting down Indian pieces, but thematic in terms of like, do I want to group animals by area? Do I want to group animals by species? Do I want to group animals by being in the same like, house like an animal house um do i want them to have uh, interspecies enrichment or something um or just what will look good next to each other like we did with the naya monitor which was the last one so we had the jaguar then we had the naya monitor and then we ha now we have the rhino which are very different animals and they have very different sizes of exhibit and that's what i wanted <laughs> um and different also um, I guess levels of modernness. I don't know how else to say it. Like they're, they are, they're not all built at the same time, right? And I wanted that because that's just realistically how zoos often look. Um, and so I hope I can continue that. I'm not sure where I will go next with this because I kind of want to get away from building these very savannah-ish. Uh, enclosures. I kind of want to build something very different, but I really don't want to um, get into just building somewhere completely different. Like I still want it to all be attached to one another. I don't want to go to like the other end of the map and build something there and just hope that it will match up because um, that will stress me and they will stress me the entire time. And I know that there will be a point where I'm almost there and then I'm like, I wish I could build something else there. And I just, I want to avoid that. So this zoo will just progress naturally from one exhibit to the other and they will all more or less neighbor each other. We already have some little like corners now that are sort of empty that need like a small thing, like a, um, like almost a filler thing. And it's not like a building or an like an entire enclosure or something but something like okay maybe we could put like an ice cream stand there or maybe we can um put like a billboard there or something and the rhino actually doesn't have an educational sign yet um as i'm not sure where i want to put it because there's also a thing with this enclosure uh it kind of has a prey predator sort of situation i'm not sure that the jaguar ugh, i keep saying jaguar I probably said it wrong the entire time, but it's a cheater. Um, that the cheater is a direct predator of a rhino, I don't think so, but it's still like, uh, you know, it's a big cat, it's a predator, and you know, then the rhino. So they could technically kind of somewhat see each other. I did uh, have this flower pot there, the, the flower bed, or however you want to call it, that kind of gives more distance there. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I think the rhin the rhinos can see the cheetah, but the cheetah can kind of see the rhinos. So I want to put something in between that, that kind of further distracts the view. Um, and also kind of separates it uh, from the view of the guest. Because it is kind of open uh, where the three... I do really like that the three enclosures kind of meet uh, in the middle, sort of. But... Also, I do kind of want to further divide it so it doesn't feel like a huge plaza that like overruns you with three different species, um, which it doesn't really because the Nile Monitor has this like um, shading area over it. So you can basically only view it from the shading area. So it is kind of sectioned off, but you can see the pool from there. And you know what I mean? So um, we are building a little bit of a, I'm not sure how these things are called. I think not really a pagoda because the pagoda, a pagoda is specifically from Asia, right? But 
It is kind of a shaded area that is an outlook into the enclosure, which actually, funnily enough, it was something that I really wanted to do right from when I had the idea for this, because this whole park um, sort of started from the idea of having the cheetah racetrack. And the cheetah racetrack has these like visitor scenes that you can watch the racing cheetahs from. So these had to be elevated. So I always knew that I wanted to have two different height elevations there. And I always knew that that would mean I could have a, like this outlook post thing up top there. So I always knew what I wanted to do there. And I pretty much also always knew that I wanted the rhinos there because I think rhinos are really cool. And um, they don't really have another way of viewing them. They have the like regular thing from the path, which by the way, I gotta say it because I always say it. I'm really happy with my fences and it didn't even take me that long. I know we've built them like ages ago. I'm sorry if you could hear that. Someone's thinking that in the middle of the night driving your motorcycle is a smart idea, but you know, it's not my motorcycle. So, <laughs> um, but okay. So you can only view the rhinos from the path with the cool uh, fence, like I just mentioned, or from up here meaning that there is not really a way to view the rhinos from like eye level. So there's not a glass piece there. I did see that before in a zoo, but it doesn't seem very common. It's probably very expensive because you need very thick glass to keep a rhino in its place. Uh, so we don't have that. Um, but we also don't have a lot of time anymore. So I'll just stop talking. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lot of fun. I hope you come back to see another time. I hope you that it, I hope that you enjoy the cinematics. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh,